today I plan to talk about uh, Defi Hellman key exchange. Uh, my plan is to break up this topic into a few uh, subtopics. Uh, first, I will start with the brief overview of uh, DH, and then I will talk about safe primes and generalized safe primes. Uh, toward the end, we will make a comparison of uh, those two approaches in terms of performance. Okay, all right, let's get started, started and uh, look into the overview of traditional DH. This is my first part. Okay, I will uh, use a few slides that I got from my presentation um, for elementary, middle school students rather. Um, so my plan is to quickly go over the um, DH key exchange um, algorithm very quickly, the traditional one. So what is the problem? Why do we need DH algorithm? The sender and the receiver need the same key, of course, in order to encrypt and decrypt, we need the same key. And how do we exchange, um, how do we agree on this uh, same key over a public channel? That's the, the goal of this um, um, DH uh, key exchange algorithm or key agreement algorithm. So, um, of course, if we send the key material over, over the public channel, then everybody can listen. Nevertheless, we would like to be able to arrive at the same key, okay, at the same secret key. Okay. So that is the interesting problem. Okay, so um, I'll skip some of the basic things very quickly. I will summarize that. We will be using mod notation because we will work in a finite set. Uh, mod means a reminder, approximately, you can assume like that. Um, 21, when it's divided by 12, the remainder is 9. Uh, 5 times 8 is 40, but we don't have 40 in this clock, so we have to do mod 12, right? Um, so this is basically the, the idea of mod, and uh, Goss studied this problem for many, many years and wrote interesting articles and books. Okay, um, now I will talk about uh, a few important things related to this clock and how we will use it in the DH algorithm, okay? Um, we will not use this clock in terms of mod 12, we will use this mod 13, okay? Um, that's one small change. Uh, the reason why we, we do so is that 13 is a prime number, right? And uh, uh, all the numbers less than 13 integer numbers um, are actually relatively prime to, to that number 13. Like one is relatively prime to 13, two is relatively prime to 13 and so on. So all of these numbers are called the Z13 star, right? That's basically um, the, the set of numbers that are relatively prime to 13, okay? Now, um, we can do interesting computations on this set. Um, I will explain in a moment why we need a prime number, um, but for now, let's assume we, we need a prime number, okay? So, um, if you now uh, just create a table like this, Mm, create one row like one, two, three, four, and so on until 12 um, for, for this particular clock. There are 12 elements. And then compute two power i. Um, don't worry where I got this two from, but let's assume that we want to compute two power i for different i values. But if you pay close attention now, what we see here is that this is an, a one-to-one -one function, right? There is no, um, there's no collusion, as you can see here, all of the elements are all, are different, right? Uh, what I mean by no collusion is this. In this row, all of the elements are different, okay? No collusion, that's what I mean. So what it means is that um, for when i is one, of course, two power i is two. When i is two, two power i is four and so on. So this is, um, two. this number two is called the generator because it generates all the elements of our clock in this case from 1 to 12 okay and you can actually find other generators um, I will come back to the generator in a moment but uh, this is the concept of a generator okay why do we need a generator that should be clear in a moment okay so um, I can move on to the next slide this function is kind of uh, called a one-way function also because it turned out that it is easy to to compute in one direction and difficult and, and not easy to reverse in another direction okay what it means is that if i um, ask you what is the value of uh, i where 2 power i is 11 mod 13 you, you wouldn't be able to answer it immediately you will take a few minutes or a few seconds depending on how fast you are to uh, manually doing it uh, it will take time uh, to answer this question and then th this is the, the the core idea of this dh uh, key exchange algorithm to be able to 
uh, make the work of the bad guy exponential time, uh, you know, to, uh, and therefore we can come up with the common key between the sender and the receiver. Okay. So also one more thing is that the mod patterns, um, the mod actually introduces uh, complexity uh, in the sense, the patterns are not that obvious, right? If you go back to the previous table, um, on this row, you know, numbers increase, decrease, increase, decrease, and so on. It's not necessarily uh, simple. Like for example, two power six um, is actually uh, smaller than two power seven, which is quite unusual. But in the modular case, that is that is what it is. Okay, so um, th that's one of the reasons why we need a mod. Um, and uh, we basically we will have a finite set, and we have now a generator, and we we also have a one-way function kind of thing. Like it's easy to go from this direction to here, but difficult to go from um, bottom row to the top row. Okay, that's the core idea of this Degas algorithm. Okay, so uh, easy and hard. And then um, one more thing we need to remember is the power of power rule of exponents. Like uh, we know that two power three power four is same as two power four power three. This is also we need. Um, in general, you could easily prove g power x power y is same as g power y power x. Okay, um, we know this uh, concept from our um, algebra. And uh, um, now let's talk about the key exchange algorithm or a key ag agreement algorithm. So both Alice and Bob start exactly at same time, right? In this clock, you see two. You can imagine now the generator is two. The G is the generator is two. Okay, so I will I will write it here. Here, for example, generator is two. All right, and now what will uh, Alice do? Alice picks a number five and computes two power five. Okay, she doesn't tell that number five to anybody. Bob does the same. He computes. He picks a random number four and he computes two power four. Okay, um, if you compute two power five, which is thirty two, thirty two mod thirteen is six. 16 mod 13 is 3. Um, Alice will send her clock to Bob. So Bob will receive 6 o'clock. Bob will send it to Alice, his clock. So Alice will receive um, a clock, 3 o'clock. Okay. Now, now it's interesting. The next step is that Alice will actually take the clock she received from Bob and apply her again. The same uh, trick she did here. Same trick. What did she do here? Um, she basically did five times multiplication, right? She will do the same again, you see here, five times. On the clock, she received. So basically, she takes three, four, five. What will Bob do? Bob does the same. Uh, he applies uh, four times multiplication on the clock he got. What you see here is that both Alice and Bob uh, agreed eventually after the simple exchange of the clock both of the clocks point to the same time, nine o'clock, okay? So basically that's all. Nine, it becomes the shared secret. Um, why is this a problem for Eve? Eve, who is our evil character trying to break the system? Why can't she find out the number five? I mean, in this case, she can actually, uh, because she can just build a small clock. Um, I will show you in a moment. And then she will figure out based on the clocks that were publicly exchanged. Remember, this is publicly exchanged. This, these two clocks are publicly exchanged, okay? There is no uh, uh, secrecy there. Um, we have to assume here, Alice knows that he, she's talking to Bob and Bob knows that, is, that he's talking to Alice. That's, um, that's assumption here, okay. Um, so, but interestingly, both of us, both of, uh, both of them have the same um, key now, okay? As we can see. Okay, so this is this is the core idea of the Hellman key exchange is that you both uh, sender and the receiver start at the same um, time, which is basically the generator G, um, and the clock size is also agreed upon. The clock size here is uh, uh, p equal to thirteen, right? So let me write it here. The clock size is thirteen, and G is equal to two, right? G is two equal to generator, and then they both agreed on the end up with the same secret here, common secret is nine. That's basically the Hellman key exchange. Still, I have not answered the question, why do we need to work with a, a, a prime number P and why do we need that generator, okay? 
So I will explain now why we need that. Okay, so let me go back here. And then, so I wrote this little program that will help us to, to address those questions. Okay? So the program itself is not uh, that complicated, very simple. It takes three arguments, B, uh, P, the, 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 the clock size, if you will, generator, and how many elements you wanted to generate, okay? The number of elements you want to generate is the third argument. Okay. So let's, let's try this quickly, and then we will talk about it. So Java DH generator. I need three parameters, right? Let me call this P to be 13, because that's what we talked about, and generator to be two. And the number of element is, say, I wanted to see 12 elements, because we know that G equal to two generates the entire clock, okay? Oops. Okay, and now we can just do Java dhgen $p $g and dollar number of elements. Okay, let's see what happens. Ah, okay, we got this table is exactly the same as what we saw on my slides. Um, when when g is two, it generates how many elements? Three, six, nine, twelve elements. Okay, and remember, um, if my p is thirteen. Z star P is basically 12, right? So we got 12 elements. Okay. All of the 12 elements are generated by my P and the G for this particular configuration. Now, okay, now what happens if my uh, generator is different? Let's say instead of G equal to two, let's try something else. Let's try G equal to three. Okay, G equal to three is not a generator of the entire group because as you can see, after, after generating the first three elements, right? Three, nine, one, when you get another three, nine, one, three, nine, one, it starts cycling, okay? So the order of this group now, the order of the subgroup rather, generated by G equal to three is just three. So these are the three elements. Here, when G is two, order of the element is, is actually the entire group, 12 elements are generated, okay? So that's basically the order. Order means how many times you have to multiply G to, to get one. Okay, that's basically the order. All right, so um, we can try more. I have not checked whether four is also generated or not. Yeah, four is also generated uh, because we can see four, eight, 12, okay? All the 12 elements are generated. Oh, one moment, one moment, sorry. Um, I, of course, um, I'm printing 12 elements, so we will have 12 elements, but this, it has only six elements. So. G equal to four is not a generator. It, it, is, it doesn't generate the entire group. It only generates a subgroup of order six because there are only six elements otherwise, and then it repeats, okay. All right, so we can try now with um, five and see what happens. With five, also we get uh, four elements, okay. So let's try with six. With six, we get all the elements, okay. So six is also a generator of the entire group. Let's try with seven. Seven, we get the entire group too get the entire group, all the elements are different, okay. What about eight? With eight, we get only four elements, okay. So eight is not a generator of the entire group, but it generates a subgroup with four elements, eight, 12, five, and one. But that's basically uh, what uh, this particular um, okay, demo is about. Um, what I wanted to show you that uh, the, the G must be important, otherwise we can't generate all possible values. If we choose a, a small G, um, you know, the, the number of possible keys will be only small, right? In, for example, if I choose my G to be eight, um, the, how many possible keys can be? G, uh, G defines the whole overall key exchange, right? Uh, so it can only be one of the four possible keys. Okay, on the other hand, if I choose my G to be say seven, um, the, how many possible keys I can? The key can be any one of the 12 elements. So the bad guy has to do more work because we have to look at each and every element of the group. Okay, so that's the reason we need a G, okay? Uh, all right, I haven't answered why we need a prime, so let's try this. Let's consider this simple scenario where my P is six, of course, six is not a prime. So what happens if I try as my G to be, say, uh, two? Can we now check what happens in, with Defi Hellman, for example, with uh, four elements, right? Just, just simple. Oh, you see here, it starts repeating right away after two, four, and it is not even a group because uh, two, four doesn't have one there anywhere, right? Two, four means um, just two, four, two, four, two, four. It's not even having the identity element one, so it's not even a group. 
So we will not be able to generate the entire group with, uh, with when, when the number B um, is not a prime number, okay? In some cases, composite number can generate uh, um, sometimes um, um, a group, um, but uh, let's, let's try it. See here, I tried with um, G equal to two, with P equal to 15, 15 is not a prime, of course, and you get only four elements, okay? Which is not the entire group. Anyway, uh, maybe we can try with different elements. Uh, with different G and see how it behaves. But overall, there is a fundamental theorem. Now I will go back to the, to the uh, theorem. The theorem says this. Um, okay. Um, if your prime, if your uh, number P is a prime, then ZP, you have to put a little star on top, ZP star, right, is a cyclic group. Okay. Cyclic group means there is a generator G like the way I shown you. If P is prime, Z star is a cyclic group, which means that you should be able to find a generator G uh, that generates the entire group, okay? Implies uh, must be, there must be a G that generates the entire, that generates the cyclic group, okay? Um, that's basically it. That means um, the possible keys are not just a small set of, um, uh, not a small subset of these GP star, but it, it is all possible elements. Okay, so now if you go back to the slides, um, what bad uh, guys will do in order to break this? Okay, let's think about that scenario. So the, we can forget about the clock now. We can formalize it. Um, Alice picks a number x. Bob picks a number y. Um, Bob uh, sends a G or y uh, to Alice, and Alice does the same. C computes um, g power x and send that to, to Bob and they both exchange the keys, public keys. These, these are called public keys, by the way. Capital A and the capital B are public because you send it through public channel. But in the end, it's interesting. Um, what you're seeing here is that uh, both Bob and uh, Alice um, arrive at the same key because of the model exponential rules that we talked about. Okay. So, um, this is the example we can skip quickly. So what happens if you wanted to, to, to attack um, or, or, or how do you attack this system? Um, you can attack the system by building this enormous table and then just look at the values, right? Um, and then map it. And of course, if this, the clock size is small, meaning if P is really small, then it's easy to break this because you can just build this table. Um, there are a couple of options people um, have explored. Um, I will talk about different attacks later. Um, but in the practice, the prime, the prime is really huge, you know, like for example, 2048 bit, which means it's about two power 2048, which is a lot of uh, numbers, right? Um, in the set, okay. Uh, the, in practice, your, your uh, P is almost uh, two power um, 2048, for example, okay, or, or even more. That, that's a lot of digits to, 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 to brute force. It's impossible to build that huge table and so on. That's the reason why they pick this, this, this large, um, a large P. And I explained to you what is the reason we need a prime P because the, the mathematical theorem says, if you give me a prime P, um, there must, I, I guarantee you that must be a generator that generates all the elements of the group, okay? That's, that's basically the reason why we need that. And um, if we carefully pick up the G, then you, you will have the entire uh, set of uh, elements generated. Okay, that means the attacker has to try uh, all possible group elements. Um, the key can be any element. That, that's basically the idea. Okay. All right. Uh, that that actually wraps up the first part. Next part, I will talk about. Um, in practice, we don't really often use this as it is. We will uh, use something called safe primes. So I'm going to talk about that um, in the next part of the demo. Okay.